Wow, what a beautiful day it is here. And um, I just want to just share some of the life of Jesus with you, the good news of the gospel. And um, I want to, this is going to be more of a kind of spontaneous type of talk. But what I am going to do, um, I'm not going to be quoting scriptures and references. But as I talk, um, they will obviously come out and um, I'm going to put, post them up on the screen um, once I edit this video. So just to encourage you, if you want to look at references, if you want some kind of biblical backing for what I'm saying, you need to do some homework and look up uh, um, some of the scriptures that you hear me speaking. OK, and I will put up the references on the screen. But this morning um, I want to share and just say to you, you know, we have just such an amazing, wonderful gospel. And we know the gospel, we're not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation for all who would believe. And no one is excluded from the gospel. Jesus died for everyone, for everyone from every religion, every background. No one is excluded. God's grace is available to all. So let me just say that up front. You know, at heart I'm a missionary, uh, an evangelist. Um, I've been many other things. God's, God seems to have taken me through from past to prof, to be prophetic and, um, you know, to be, uh, have mercy ministries. But at the moment, God's been convicting me of the great end time harvest and how we need to get out there and share the good news of the finished work of the cross, Jesus Christ, his gospel, and, um, the power of God's grace to set us free from sin and death so it's in that context that i want to respond to um a little bit of a prompting that came came this morning when i was, I was listening to an american uh, praise and worship channel fairly well known one broadcasting out of chicago and uh, wonderful worship stuff but you know they made some statements that i want to kind of challenge a little bit and i want to i wanted and it was to do with Islam, it was to do with Muslims and their believing or their coming to faith in Christ. And you know, I have been, I've, I've studied the Quran, um, and, 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 and I actually don't encourage you to do that, but uh, I did that because I live in a city in Durban in South Africa where uh, it has the biggest Indian population outside of India in the whole world. So Durban is a city of probably 5 million people. It has lots of Indian people. A lot of them are Muslims. And about 10 years ago, we had like a whole infiltration of kind of quite extreme Wahhabi Muslims coming from uh, Saudi Arabia and other places trying to set up a stronghold here. Um, that's partly because there was a uh, Islamic apologetic guy called Ahmadidat, who established a Muslim stronghold, an extreme Sunni Muslim stronghold in Durban. So consequently, um, I have been involved in, in reaching out to Muslims um, in this area and, and in other parts of Africa. I've been on a number of missions. And I just want to just share about some misconceptions. So I'm, I'm, it's going to be like a fairly, as I say, spontaneous talk this. But I pray, <laughs> I want to pray that as I do share, that you are encouraged to, to go out and share the gospel, the good news with Jesus. Because let me tell you something, the whole world is looking for good news. And we have the good news. We have the gospel that sets people free. And our gospel is a gospel not of works, but of grace. In other words, Ephesians 2, 8 says, we are saved by grace through faith and not by works so that no man can boast. In other words, it's saying, hey, salvation, healing, eternal life, deliverance from evil spirits is a gift from a good, kind and loving God who sent his son to die for our sins. That's the good news of Christianity. You know, Christianity is the only faith. And I, I, I don't want to say religion because Christianity is actually not actually a religion it's a relationship it's a faith relationship it's different to religion religion definition of religion would be that you do you attain to god through works rituals rules and regulations that's actually not christianity christianity is is you come right with god you are righteous with god through faith in god's goodness and the work of the cross 
So we have a gospel that Muslims need to need to hear. You know, we are not called to hate people. We are called to love people. We love all people. You know, that's a definition, the, the underlying foundation. God is love and God loves all people. So we are called to get out there and love on people and share the good news with people, including Muslims, you know, and this. But sadly, there's a great fear of, of um, that's been perpetuated by Islam. So Islam is the religion of Muslims. OK, and uh, Islam was was founded in, in the sixth century by a prophet, by a, by a man who claimed he was a prophet called Muhammad. He was a merchant in, in he lived in the area of Saudi Arabia. And in at that time, there was a lot of influence into his life by Christians. There were Christians in Saudi Arabia or Arabia, it was called at that time. There were Christians and there were Jews and there were pagans. And actually, if you go into the history of Islam, what Muhammad did is he took a a, uh, a mixture of Christianity, of Islam and paganism, and he made it into a new religion called Islam, a religion especially for Arabs, because Arabs didn't have their own religion. In, in a sense, they were either pagans, the Jews had, uh, uh, um, Jew they were Jewish, Christians had Christianity. Arabs did not have their own religion with their own prophet and their own center of worship. So, Muhammad, in his well, wisdom, made up the religion of Islam, claiming that it was given to him by an angel, Gabriel, in a cave, written down and uh, after his death by many of his disciples. But Islam, Islam was advanced initially by the sword, so, so it was called the religion of the sword. And in fact, most of the uh, nations that we know today as Islamic nations like Tunisia, Algeria, Liber um, sorry, Libya, even um, what they call Palestine, um, Turkey, you must understand at the time of Muhammad, those were all Christian nations. They were part of the Byzantine Christian Empire. And Islam swept Muhammad and, and, his, and his warriors in jihad, in, in holy war, swept into those areas and either slaughtered or converted by force or enslaved the Christians in those nations and the pagans and the Jews. So you need to understand history is very clear that Islam was advanced by the sword and the Quran is very clear. It's jihad, holy war. That's what we see going on all the time. These terrorists that are blowing up places and that they are just fulfilling the commands of the Quran. So just to put that in context, okay, the, the, so what I'm saying in context. So we need to understand that the, that the God that Muslims worship is not the same God as the God of the Jews and the Christians. They, they think it is. They think their God is the same God. They are taught their God is the same God. But let me just say it is clear their God is not the same God of Christianity and Judaism. Now, I've got to be careful what I say here because this, this is going up on YouTube. So I'm actually not saying necessarily everything quite clearly as, as maybe I should. But let me just say, Allah of the Quran of Islam is not the God Yahweh of the Old Testament or the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is a different God. And that is why we need to get this clear because in the Quran, let me just say, Allah says this. He says, I do not say Allah has a son. And yet now in the Bible, God says of Jesus, this is my son. This is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Believe in him. Listen to him. So let's be clear. The God, Allah, says, I have no son. The God of the Bible says, this is my son, with who I'm well pleased. The Bible reveals Trinitarian doctrine. It doesn't mention the word Trinity, but it reveals that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one God of three persons. And that was agreed in the year around 325 by all the overseers of the Christian world, 
Trinitarian doctrine, okay? Now, yes, the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible, but Trinitarian doctrine does. It makes it clear that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. One person, the same substance. Sorry, one, sorry, three persons of one substance, one God, okay? In the Quran, it says, do not, do not use Trinity as a doctrine. It denies the Trinity. It denies the sonship of Jesus. It also talks about this person called Isa. Now, the Muslims claim that Isa is Jesus. But let me tell you something again. It's a false Christ. Now, now Paul warned. He said, he said, don't let someone come to you with a, another gospel. And it says, beware of going into the desert. <coughs> going out into the desert to seek false Christ. So, and again, I'm, you'll see the scriptures coming up on the top of the screen. So when, when, it, when it talks, when the Quran talks about Isa, and the Muslims say, hey, yo, this is just Jesus. But actually, if you look, the Isa, the Jesus of Islam, was born in a different place. He lived a different life. And it says he never died on the cross. He hung on the cross, but he never died. It does say that Esau will be a Messiah. He will come to judge the world in the end. It does say that Esau is a prophet. But let me tell you something. The Esau of the Quran is a false Christ. The history of the Quran, it talks about Musa being, being Moses. And it talks about Adam and it talks about Mir Miriam, Mary, but they are false, false characters in a false history. So we need to understand why I'm saying this is do not equate the God of Islam with the God of the Bible. It's not the same God. Now we know, and again, if you want, if you want to get into this, you can, um, you can text me, and, and we can talk. I've taught on Islam in many, many churches. I've I've evangelized many, many Muslims, and you know there is this compromise going on where we think we can use the Quran to lead people to Christ. The minute you start giving the Quran authority. You are basically undermining the authority of the Bible because the Quran and Muslims believe that the Bible is corrupt and that the Quran is the final revelation. In other words, it's an add on. And we know also that the Bible, the book of Revelation said we're not to add on. It was agreed in 325 where the canon of the Bible was closed, that we're not going to add on books. We're not going to add the Quran on to the Bible and say, oh, yeah, well, this was just final clarity from God. This is what Muslims believe. And that Christians and Jews are in error. Now, let me, let me just say, we, we need to get this right. We need to reach out to Muslims in love. We need to love on them. We need to share the gospel. But you know, the one thing that Muslims love to see is somebody who has a complete conviction about their beliefs. And if you go with a half-hearted conviction, oh, yeah, well, the Quran's good, you know, and the Quran can lead you to Christ. No, it can't. It can be a point of discussion, yes, and, and we can start saying, hey, who is this Isa in the Quran? Who is this Allah in the Quran? But it doesn't reveal the God of the Bible. It doesn't reveal the Jesus of the Bible. It reveals a false Isa, a false Jesus, and a false God. Just like other religions. You know, all other religions. By the way, the, the basic tenet of uh, Islam is works righteousness over and over and over again it said you must work righteousness in other words you get right with this god through your good works and that is why they've got to pray five times a day and uh, the, you know the pillars of islam and if you don't do it you know there's no assurance in islam you never know if you're going to be saved and go to paradise to, to allah's paradise the difference is we have assurance and to my muslim friends who listen to this let me just say we Christians who are born again have assurance of where we're going. We are going to paradise, to heaven, and heaven's going to come to earth, and we're going to live forever with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
And my Muslim friends, if you're listening to this, I want to invite you into, the, into that wonderful future. It's a free gift. You cannot be saved by your righteous works. Self-righteousness is never good enough for the true God, the God of the Bible. It might, you might try to get it there, to get to Allah by that, but you will not get eternal life through your good works, through your works of righteousness. You are righteous. The gift of righteousness is given by faith in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for your sins, who atoned for your sins. So my Muslim friends, if you're listening out there, if this thing's making you angry, I'm sorry, it's not meant to. It's, but it's to bring you into the love and truth of Jesus. Let me say, I love you. <laughs> because God loves you. I too was deceived. I was a new ager into all different types of religions. But just like me, you can repent. You can turn away from wrong beliefs, wrong actions. And today receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. All you got to do is invite Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Come in and reveal truth. <laughs> More Holy Spirit. <laughs> touch them, Lord. Touch, touch each person here with your love. And anyone else, anyone else who's listening that has not given their life to Jesus, touch them today with your love, Father God. Only the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit. Even in the Quran, it talks about it talks about the Spirit of God, Rala. Rala is the Holy Spirit. Rala is a false spirit. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit of God touch you today. <laughs> if you've given your life to Jesus today, or if you want to do that, you can contact me. My contact details are there. I've heard some um, preachers saying, well, they believe in the same God. They don't believe in. They think they believe in the same God. They think it's that they've been deceived into thinking the Allah of the Quran is the same God. He isn't. They need to repent. They need to come out. The same with any people coming out of any other false religion, whether it's Hinduism or Buddhism or New Age. We need to repent when we come out. When I came out of New Age, I need to repent and turn away from those false gods which I had created in my image or, or the image of what I thought was God. So it's the same applies, my brothers and sisters. If you're Muslims, you need to come out and you need to understand you've been deceived. God loves you. And yes, that same God that, that saves the Jews. The Jews... What their, their issue is they don't need to renounce their God. What they need to do is to accept Jesus as their Messiah. Their God is the biblical God of the Old Testament. Allah is not that same God. So I hope this brings clarity and I hope this brings some clarity to, to um, my brothers and sisters in Christ who are reaching out to Muslims. Please remember, we don't should not be arguing apologetics with Muslims. They, they often know the Bible backwards, and they know the Quran, and they will counter your arguments. What they need to do is have supernatural encounters with the Holy Spirit that will shift their hearts. Because if you're going to argue from scriptures, you cannot argue with someone who's not spirit-filled. Because there's, there's stuff in the scriptures which were only understood by the Spirit. And if you argue from a logical viewpoint, they will just nail you. What they need is, hey, you believe in your God, I believe in Let me lay my hands on you and pray for you. Let signs, let's see where the signs and wonders. Let's see who has a touch of the Holy Spirit. Because my experience is that's the only way they will be saved. <laughs> so I just want to pray for you now. Lord, I pray for every Muslim, any Muslims listening here now. I declare your love over them. I declare your grace to them. And I declare salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ and not by works. To my brothers and sisters out there who are hearing this, who know Muslim people, I pray now for an impartation of spiritual passion and zeal to share the gospel in love, in grace, to bring everybody who's trapped in false religion in faith in Jesus Christ. <laughs>
Lord, we thank you for your goodness in Jesus' mighty, mighty, wonderful name. When we remember we are righteous, we are holy, we are perfected through the blood of Jesus and the finished work of the cross. And we are perfectly qualified to take the good news into the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God.